Hello everyone, Jamie Taylor here. Thought I'd do a little piece to camera just to let you know what's in this new class. I think it would appeal to someone who's fairly new to improvising over changes, but I'd like to think there's also something in there for more experienced players as well, certainly in terms of an alternative perspective. Basically, this is the start of me trying to share with you my personal approach to playing over chord changes, and especially the kinds of chord changes that you find in standard songs. The thing that I've come to realise over the years is that the harmonic principles that these songs were created on are centuries old and they actually predate by a long way some of the jazz theory concepts that have come to light in the last 40 or 50 years. So it's always really struck me that you shouldn't need to have access to the half whole diminished scale or all sorts of modal things and super Locrian scales and all of these very daunting theoretical concepts to play over songs that were written in the 1930s when no one was really talking about this stuff or hardly anyone was. How did Coleman Hawkins manage to sound so great on Body and Soul back in the day, years before anybody had codified all of that stuff? Now I think sometimes the temptation is to suggest that those guys were using all of these modern concepts, they just hadn't found the name for it yet. And that might be true sometimes, but I'm not completely convinced by that argument. I'm more convinced by the idea that actually what they were doing was drawing on things that have existed for a very long time in lots of different kinds of music. So that's what this session's all about, really. It's about trying to have a really good understanding of key and how chords relate to one another within keys to create the pieces that we're trying to improvise on. The thinking being that if you understand how the thing was written, you've got a chance of understanding how to solo on it. I'm certainly not anti-theory, and I don't advocate exclusively learning by ear. I think transcription can be very important, but theory is very important too. You just need the right theory, and the kind of theory that's going to help you to play a tune that was written in the last 10 years, informed by all of these concepts, that's not the same theory necessarily that you're going to need to have an understanding of an old standard song. It's brilliant to use the more modern concepts and apply them to other things, but you really do need to have initially, I think, that clarity of understanding of how chords and keys work together and something other than a sort of match the mode to the chord symbol approach because certainly for me that's never really worked and it took many years for me to work out that it doesn't work and why not. So I'm hoping this will save you all a little bit of time. And ultimately, it's just a personal approach. It's how I think about music. Something that I'm going to try and explain a little bit and expand on over the coming sessions. Obviously, there's as many ways of thinking about all of this stuff as there are musicians, but this is my way, and I really hope you find it helpful. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that scale of C, and I'm going to look at what happens if I build a dominant seventh chord off all of the degrees of that scale instead of just the fifth one. What happens if we change our C major chord that was the tonic to C7? Why might we do that? Well you can hear why we might do that because it's going to take us to four. The tonic becomes a dominant and then that takes us to the subdominant. No prizes for working that out. Let's look at what happens if I do that on chord two. It used to be a D minor, let's make it a D7. Well that's taking us to G, which gives us what we might call a modulation to the dominant. It's usually only a, a very brief one because more often than not the dominant just takes us straight back to the tonic. how that might work. Now it's when we come to the dominant chords that things get a little bit more subtle. Obviously G7 is the diatonic primary dominant of that key. So again we can play 
within the key of C major. And if we run that from G to G, that's where we get that Mixolydian scale from. But if you look at those chords, you'll see that there's a number of dominant chords besides G. There's an A7 in there. There's an E7 in there. There's a B7 in there. There's also a D7. And it's knowing what to do with them that really sorts us out. That's where we really need some understanding of how functional harmony works. And it's certainly not a case of just throwing a Mixolydian mode at all of those things. That's what we need to try and get into. So looking then at the A7 in bar 2. Now that is chord 6. And the diatonic chord 6 would be a minor 7th like that. But it's an A7. So we've got to bring a C sharp in. We've got to look at where that's going. It's going to D minor 7. And that's what A7 does functionally in this key. Six as a dominant. Nine times out of ten that's going to take you to chord two diatonic. So we don't want to take it further away from C major than we've got to. Where is it going? It's going to D minor. It's going to one of the three minor chords that belong to our key. Okay I'm going to have a go at playing a few lines over that entire progression now, no accompaniment because hopefully you'll be able to hear where I am from the lines that I'm playing. And I dare say I won't be able to do it without sneaking in a couple of little chromatic passing notes and things that's so ingrained in my ears and in my style of playing that they're bound to creep in. But basically it's going to be those scales that I just talked about and hopefully you'll be able to hear how it works. One, two, one, two, three, it sounds like we have a new tonic then you've changed key so in the case of the way you look tonight all of that is in F ba is the tonic but then when we go can hear now we have a new tonic there's several consecutive chords in the new key of a flat and we've changed key so I'm not saying that things never change key but there's a distinction to be made between proper modulations where the tonic moves and chord progressions that fundamentally stay in one key but make use of secondary dominance little fleeting excursions that reference related keys but don't really go anywhere fundamentally it's all coming back within the overall tonality. That's the distinction that we need to make. It probably sounds quite wordy and quite complex in the telling, but it's probably a little bit clearer when it's there on the page. So do use the PDF as well. And hopefully what you can see is that this is all in the service of making things simpler rather than making them more complex. Mm -hmm. 